Hi everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and I'm back with a different kind of video for you guys today. Um, I'm going to do a shabby sheet card with no colored image or anything of that nature on it. Um, this is a card for Seven Kids College Fund. I am going to be using, this is the Songbird, Songbird Secret Paper from, um, I'm not sure if they pronounce it Poin or Pion or how they say it. I can't get it all in frame here. I'm not going to zoom out because i got sun flare like you can see on my hands all around me right now because it's a beautiful day out and I don't want to close windows. So we're going to do it this way. So this is called Perching Bird. You get this in this corner and, th and these are all like a cream based paper. The other side is this beautiful pattern. And then we have these birds. So they've got the little nest and there's some blue um, fading into the cream background here and then the back side is that same pattern just in blue and then we have some beautiful dream catchers along the top and then again it's just got this pattern constantly that's fading into the cream based papers here and the back is again that pattern this time in green then we have some cut aparts for you so we got um, wishing you a happy birthday cherish moments cherish moments captured in the okay um, but yeah so there's just different sentiments um, three by four cards you can cut apart you could use them in project life or on your card bases again these ones you could stamp a pretty sentiment in here and put it on your card base we may actually use that now that I said that and the back side is just a craft type colored solid paper then we have more cut aparts here this page is called tags and you get some postcard cut aparts and then some tags and up here you've got like a little bit of a dream catcher that's really pretty some little circles and a tag piece down here and the back is this mossy green color I love this page this one's called marigolds and it's got marigolds all over it they're so cute and tiny and dainty and perfect for cards and the best part is it's a 12 by 12 sheet so you can make like five or six cards before you run out of this paper and I use every scrap of paper that I buy like this so and on the back it's again a craft type but it does have let's see if I can get that to there in the sun flare you can see it you can see the pattern on it I love it gorgeous gorgeous some more dainty little flowers this one's called apple blossom so it's a green base background with your little white and slightly blue toned flowers on it the back side is that same pattern again but on a green that mossy green type back then we have this one. You could cut all these apart for the letters you want. It's just little bunting. And it's got all the letters of the alphabet twice. And then you got numbers. Congratulations, happy birthday for you. It's your day today. To a very special friend and thank you. There's a row of butterflies. And then it's got a row of marigolds and it repeats all of that stuff. And then there's just a little bit of the green at the bottom. The back side of that is the blue color from this collection. Then we have another piece. This one's called Songbird Secrets. So it's more cut aparts and it says like, keep your eyes on the stars and hope and the hope in your heart. Every day is another chance to make your dream come true. Until you spread your wings, you will not learn how far you can fly. So it's just got some really like uplifting sentiments. You got two little girl cut aparts down here and this beautiful little wreath. And then up along the top again, you got two birds and some uh, dream catchers. So this is a single sided piece of paper. This one is called In the Nest. And it's just these nice blue patterns fading into the cream background. The back side has music paper framed out by flowers and this beautiful little wreath. The rest is that blue tone paper. This one is called pendants. So you got the apple blossoms along the top with little pendants coming down. And this is like a script pattern and then it fades into that creamy craft type color. And the background is the same as that idea of the blue with the craft fading into the cream base. Then we've got Apple Orchard, so it's a striped paper with the apples and pennants. And the back side is again that same, but in the green tones. My favorite paper from the entire collection is this one. It is called Blooming Branches. Again, it's apple blossoms, butterflies in between. And the back side is a blue. It is that same pattern as before that I showed you in the craft and the green. So those are what we are taking papers out of. The papers were supplied to me from Seven Kids College Fund. Um, just for a full disclaimer so that nobody can say that they don't know. So they did supply me with this collection, which I was going to buy anyway. So thank you very much, Kelly and Karen. I truly appreciate it, and I hope my projects do you justice. Um, I've also pulled for my project today some... I did a haul... Well, I got 
white cardstock for layering underneath and this will be my card base. I'm going to do a standard A2 size top folding card so it'll be four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I pulled some of this chipboard. I do not know how to pronounce this name. So like Wiccan... Wiccananka? I'm not sure. But it's got the numbers at the top so that you can refer to them in the store. But these... So I picked up these ones. They're just beautiful little sprays. I've got some clocks here. I can pull one of these out to show you. I purchased these all with my own money, but they are sold at the Seven Kids College Fund store. That's where I bought them from. I think they are beautiful. This chipboard is crazy priced, fantastic, like, so these are beautiful. Again, I'm sorry about that sunflower, that's all over the place. But they're so dainty and gorgeous, and so I pulled those ones out, those are little clocks. I pulled out these little filigrees to tuck in behind. I pulled out this bunting that I may use along the top. Um, I have fabric tack adhesive for gluing on my flowers. I have Tombow Mono Multi, excuse that it's filthy, I've had this forever and it's still not empty and I refuse to buy a new one until it's gone, so as the glue sticks to the outside and then you're, yeah, anyway, it's gross, but for my chipboard and things of that nature. Um, I did pull out, I have some um, white cherry blossoms from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'm not sure if these are in the store. I do know that Kelly and Karen are now carrying Wild Orchid Craft flowers. I will link to them in the description box below because everybody needs flowers. Um, I also have a couple of larger flowers that I've pulled out to go with the paper collection. I have these guys here. These are um, resin um, feathers. They are from Prima Marketing. I picked them up at the store. I'm, right now I haven't looked if there are still any in stock, but I will check. And if they are, they will be linked down below. So I did purchase these there as well. And then I just have, this is my Walnut Stain Distress Ink. And I have a blending tool for it, a pair of scissors, and I have a clear acrylic block because I did pull out, this is just for my stash, this is a My Favorite Thing stamp. It is called um, Cheerful Blessings. It's all, lots of them are religious based, so we're probably going to use one of these unless I find one of those little cut aparts that I like. I haven't decided yet. So that's what we have to make our card, and I will film the process for you. Hopefully you enjoy it. Okay, so we're going to get into the card process here, and I'm just cutting my first panel, which will be a four and an eighth by five and three eighths. I like to do a, pa a panel of solid, solid color cardstock beside every layer. And I'm just going through and I'm kind of showing you the entire process. So I'm picking out my papers and I'm picking out what corner of the paper I'm going to cut for. And I went through all of these papers with you guys at the start of this video and they're gorgeous and I love them. And the link to get them at Seven Kids will definitely be in the description box below. So I'm going around with my Distress Ink. I believe this is Walnut Stain and I'm just inking the edges of all the paper. When I do my shabby chic or vintage or anything like this cards, I like to ink them and then use my distressing tool on them because then I get like the brown ink that I put on and then the white core of the paper and I just think it looks really pretty. Um, this is a Prima distressing tool. I've had it forever. I love it because it fits in my hand and it's got a handle so I can hang on to it. So I'm just going to adhere that on and then you guys will see that I kind of debate between using the stamp, a stamp and I got all sorts of stuff that I go through before I decide what I'm doing. I just left this entire process together. Um, this is a very simple card like this. I haven't filmed <laughs> making my cards like this in a very long time. So I decided to start with something relatively simple. And the piece I'm cutting out now does not matter because we do not end up using it on this card. But like I said, I just kind of wanted to leave it all together so that you know that it doesn't just like... See, I, I was like, eh... And then I thought about using one of these sentiments out of the middle here, so I cut them out, and I'm like, eh, and I don't use those either. But with cut aparts like this, it doesn't matter because I just put them all in the bag with the pattern paper, and I'll get to them, I'll use them. They're all cut aparts anyway, so it's fine. They're supposed to be cut aparts. It's not like I ruined anything. But I figured it would be easier just to kind of leave the entire process together. See, so I was like, eh. Yeah, don't love it. So we'll get rid of that and then maybe we'll use one of these little dream catchers, which I still want to use and I have an idea for them and I will be doing that very soon, but 
it didn't work for this because it wasn't exactly what I wanted either. <laughs> so the first half of this whole process is like, meh, I don't use any of it. <laughs> So then I go through and I'm like, hmm, I love that. And that's what I end up doing. So it's a very, very simple. I cut this down and I can't remember what size it ends up being, but I just cut it down so that all the lines are gone from around it. And then I distress it and I layer it on top of a piece of white, um, solid color cardstock. So just white cardstock here. I'm cutting that and I cut it an eighth of an inch bigger than the piece of paper. So then I get a 16th inch border all the way around. So it's not too big and it's not too small and it just kind of peeks out just to give it that little bit of breakup between the patterns. So again, I'm distressing this with the walnut stain distress ink, and then I'm going to take my Prima distressing tool and I'm going to rough up all the edges all the way around and adhere it onto the cardstock. I guess I must have taken a break there because there was a cut in the video. My son must have needed something. So I'm going to now put this card base or this bottom panel onto my card base. And my card base is a standard A2, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. Um, so that when I start, now when I put the that panel on with the sentiment on it, I can start adding the chipboard and the flowers and the resin pieces to the bottom just to finish it off. And I don't have to try and adhere it afterwards when it's all lumpy and uneven. So I'm just pulling out some of my flowers here. I've got a couple of those and this is just some foam, the foam tape I use. I buy mine at the Dollar Dollarama here in Canada. So, so I take that and I'm going to stick that on here. And then it's not centered. I do end up ripping it up. I do believe I'm moving it. So I'm going to use, yeah, see, there we go. I moved it up too. So I'm going to start with these two. I'm going to start with two resin flowers here. And I'm just going to glue them on. I'm using Fabric Tac. It holds them great. They aren't going to come off. I have the card beside me. They're on there solid. I use it for my flowers as well, especially when I'm upstairs doing anything. When I'm downstairs, sometimes I'll pull out the hot glue gun, but when I'm upstairs, I use this. So I'm going to glue this first flower right in the center. And then I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, that works for me. Then I'm going to pull out two cherry blossoms. One's going to end up going on either side. Oh, my big head's getting in the way. So they're going to go like that, but I am going to add a little bit of chipboard first. So I'm going, I'm not sure which what this chipboard is called off the top of my hand. Um, but I will have a link to it in the description box below. You can pick it up over at seven kids. So I'm just tucking a few pieces of that in behind. So I'm going to cut it off and stick it in there. Flip that one over so that it curves the way I want it to. And then I'm going to glue it all together and that'll be our card. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I am working on another one. The next video I have for you guys for seven kids will be a lot more detailed and a lot more pieces and I'll put a colored image in it and it'll be a giant shabby sheet card. I just wanted to start with this just to kind of get my bearings around filming it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.